3 Falcon here, and this is my list of tips and tricks for Pale World. Tip number one is to utilize your pails whenever you are out and about. So let's say I'm going to be doing something specific here. If we take the pail and we throw it at something, yeah. uh. you'll see that it'll start mining. So this life monk has logging, so he'll sit here and snack this tree for me here. Right, so... And it'll just keep doing that as long as you're there. So, say that I'm doing anything specific here, building. Always just try to have something out and about. So, one of my favorite ones to get early game, because uh, you get it right here in the starter section, is the cats. It's a great way early game to mine out all of your stone and your calorium. So, you can sit there and he'll smack all of that. And so, I can go over and, you know, be capturing stuff. Now, he he will stop when you start fighting. So, it's not always quicker to do that. Always. But, early game, what I typically do when I'm out and about is I pick up the cat, throw him at it, have him smack it, and then I start farming it as well. And you can see he hits for 8 to 10. But you hit, typically I was hitting for 15 to 20 in the early levels of the game. So it's basically getting a few extra hits. Um, whenever you go to the next one, they always don't just pick up and run with you. So you just press your E, pick it out, and then just throw him down on the next one. Now, he will not farm this, uh, the ore here, so if you see when you're holding it, it says can't be assigned. Okay, so that's not going to help at all. Now, one of the best ones to get is this uh, big toys right here. So he will sit there and dig all that out and you can just stand right underneath it and get free, free mining out of it and do whatever else you need to do that's right here in the area if you need to do other mining or whatever you need to do uh, but it, he does do it quicker than you can and you also don't burn up the durability of your stuff so it also Cuts down on the overall amount of that you're going to have to, like, mine as you're going. Tip number two is to cycle through these little world bosses. Some of them are in dungeons, some of them are just standing out and about. But you get a good amount of XP, and that's one of the quick ways to kind of cycle through and level up quickly. Uh, and get some good resources, so... It is needed a lot for your ancient parts, so, and that's also how you get your ancient technology, so you can unlock these items on the side and be able to build stuff out. We do need the ancient parts quite a bit for not only to build these and grappling guns and quite a bit of other stuff and towards the mid and end game. Tip number three is to utilize the merchants as much as you can. There's three different types. The first one here is the Pal Merchant. So you can come in here and you can see he has kind of the basic type animals that we get. Whenever you're looking, you want to make sure that you are picking the ones that have the good, best skills. So this one's got two gold skills with Ferocious and Motivator Leader. And it wouldn't hurt to have another cow. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick him up. You can also sell excess ones that you don't really need. Um, so like, if I want to throw him in, I just right click. I get 163 bucks. They're pretty easy to farm out. So it's a good way to build up some reserved cash here. I'll do a whole more in-depth video on how to earn money. 
uh, here is the general merchant, the wandering merchant here. So you can see he has kind of like your standardized items that you don't really use. Don't typically buy a whole lot here. The electric organs are probably the biggest appeal for purchasing on this one. These are somewhat hard to get in the amounts that you need for later game stuff. Uh, but you do want to come in here and sell. Uh, you get quite a bit off of selling the precious pelts and the other items you get off of the world losses. Um, like I said, I'll do a more in-depth on how much you get off of each item. Uh, later on, I've already got all that mapped out. The third type of merchant is the black marketer here. And so he has typically little higher end ones that you can get off of these, this guy here. Um, so once again, you kind of want to use the same criteria, typically looking for good level or just ones that you don't have. So I have all of these with better skills, so there's really no point. The big difference is you can actually sell people. So let's say I wanted to sell him this merchant. I could for 1500 bucks, but I don't want to. Uh, which also leads us into my next point of you can actually capture and summon these merchants. And so you can get a whole bunch of these into your base. And then you have more stuff to buy from. So I don't think that you can buy from them out in the field, which would be nice. But if you come over into the base, you can drop him into your pale box. So let's replace this jolt hog here. And there he is. So we can come over and we can talk to him. Buy, and then he's got a stock that refreshes as well. So you could potentially just keep. I'm going to pick up this guy because I do want Ferocious on a fox uh, for breeding purposes. But you could get a whole pile of these different types of merchants and keep them in and cycle through. Tip number four is actually more informative. You still get the resources whenever you capture yeah. over whenever you just kill them. So you can see here, hopefully we catch them in this one. to do this a few times and just having bad luck. As you can see, we get a big XP bonus, but we also got two Caprici meats, some berries, and a horn to go along with it. So a lot of times it's more beneficial and you actually get more resources for capturing them than killing them, if you have the time and resources. Sometimes when I'm riding through on one of my stronger mounts, I will just kind of wipe the areas, get some easy, quick experience, and move on. But typically if I'm running around, just kind of doing whatever, I try to capture overkill. So, yeah. see here. See, that's only 19% with the backdrop. See how that works. Ha! Tip number five is to set up your farming early. Uh, it gets quite taxing having to run through and collect everything to keep all of your stuff fed. You can see how many berries I have to run through. 
to refill and feed just a few of ours here. It didn't take long for us to burn through. So you can see I went through about 40 something berries there pretty quickly. And the meats feel a little more, but they're a little bit harder to collect. So my suggestion is to set up your farming early so that it doesn't become overtaxing. And it's not too hard to do so. So the two main ways to do so is with your berry farms. There's some tomato farms and wheat farms as well that you get. Uh, but also just these ranches. Uh, you can throw in you can throw in the bees for honey, the cows for milk, and uh, the little chickadees for eggs, right? Uh, and you can use all of this to help farm up some more and fill up quickly on your food. Uh, you can also combine that with other items at the cook fire and be able to make quite a bit. So we're coming over here, looking. See? So with the berries and the lamb, we can make the herb roasted lamb oil. That gives you 10% defense and more sated tea. I guess that's how you say it. Tip number six is to get and upgrade your gliders as soon as you can. It really makes moving around the map a lot quicker. Here we'll test out the first level. Let's see how far that we get. Okay, now we'll upgrade, put in the upgraded one. We'll see that we landed pretty even with that rock there. We'll come back up to where we were. Here. We want the exact same pattern. And we can see that we're going to be going further. They're moving a little bit quicker as well. So cool thing you can do is run, slide, and jump. When you're going down hills, it works a little better. So we'll kind of demonstrate over here on this one. So run, start sliding, jump, and then slide. And you can get a pretty large distance right there. Tip number seven is to use the sort function inside the inventories to reset timers. So we can see that this cheeky poultry has less than four minutes. When we press sort, it goes back up to 10 minutes, right? So this is fairly glitchy, and it's likely to not continue to be usable. I think that they'll eventually get rid of this little glitchy type stuff. But while it's in play, we need to make sure that we're utilizing it and save yourself some farming and some use here. Now, some of these foods don't have timers, and that's awesome. Tip number eight is to remember you can build anywhere. So you can always create a favorable situation for yourself. So let's say that I'm having a really hard time with some of these guys here early game. Um, you know, they're just constantly just wrecking me. So what I can do is I can come through and I can just place this stuff here and build through. So let's say that these thugs over here are causing me a lot of problems. I'm having trouble getting them through. I can create quickly, almost Fortnite style. A little base and be semi-protected. Now I can pop over, take a shot at him. And hide. 
so you can cr quickly create your own little your own little hidey holes in favorable terrain. Now these can take damage and they get destroyed, but they're only a couple of wood that throw up, and it's something quick and easy that you can do to ensure that you are working in favorable positions. You can't build right up on the world bosses, but you can build really close to them. Uh, it makes it makes it something that uh, until you can even do it mid combat. See, now I'm semi-protected. Now I can come over and take advantageous shots. And dominate the battlefield. Tip number nine is to doing with your inventory. So, if you press R while hovering over one of the sides, it'll automatically fill in to things that are already over there. So, if you hover over and you press Shift and right click, you can take half. Right? So, let's just take oh, some of these things here and demonstrate again. Right? And it works from both directions. So, now we can go on this side, press R and it switches it over. So it, it'll take what's in your inventory and auto fill into those boxes. So early game especially, really nice when you're coming through and you're just wanting to drop in boxes. You don't even need to really look. You just run through and press R and drop what you need. Now, it looks like I put my money in one of these, which I I want to keep my money on me. Money is weightless. So, there we go. Tip number nine is to doing with your inventory. So, if you press R while hovering over one of the sides, it'll automatically fill in to things that are already over there. So, if you hover over and you press shift and right click, you can take half, right? So let's just take oh, some of these things here and demonstrate again, right? And it works from both directions. So now we can go on this side, press R, and it switches it over. So it, it'll take what's in your inventory and auto fill into those boxes. So early game especially, really nice when you're coming through and you're just wanting to drop in boxes, you don't even need to really look. You just run through and press R and drop what you need. Now, it looks like I put my money in one of these, which I want to keep my money on me. Money is weightless. So, there we go. Tip 11 is to ensure that you're getting your 10 for your capture bonus. Now we already said to kind of capture everything we can, but this is a little different. So if you notice I only have four, so I can actually capture six more of these life months. And each one of these is about a tenth of a level. So it can really start adding up. So as you go down, at a certain point when you're looking to level, just kind of look through and pick through the ones that you can easily find and then go track them down. So let's see, I still have three of these gun mosses. Now if I want to find where to look for them, I can pull this up and all of these areas are lighted up. At night is a separate one, right? So let's say these Vixies, which are very good. You can see that in day they're there and at night they're there. So we'd want to come over here and farm some of these if we wanted to get more of these fixes. Okay, so we're going to go over our stats here. So each level you get to enhance your stats. There's 
three that are a lot better than the other three that you're going to want to focus on. One is HP, where you're just not getting one shot. Your stamina, so you can actually get out and about and do things. Um, and then your weight is very crucial. That way you can actually carry the stuff that you need, especially for resource runs. Um, and also just making sure that when you're at time. So uh, you get 50 for every point in weight and warp speed. I believe you only get two in attack and defense. You get 10 in stamina and you get 100 whenever you put in HP. Um, so once again, the HP, stamina, and weight are your good drops. And you probably want to stay, absolutely stay away from work speed. Because you don't want to be the one out there actually putting the stuff together. Um, and the defense and attack, I just don't think are worth it. 